With this video, our adventure in waveguides draws to a close, and I'll give you the big reveal that something you use all the time and perhaps never thought that hard about is in fact a waveguide, and that's a coax cable. One way of thinking about a coax cable is as a parallel plate waveguide rolled up into a tube, and as it turns out, the parallel plate waveguide analysis transfers very easily into this context. We've got inner and outer plates of radii A and B respectively, and the space in between the plates is typically filled with some dielectric spacer of permittivity epsilon. So since this does kind of look like a parallel plate waveguide rolled up on itself, let's use TEM trial solutions that are modeled after the parallel plate solutions. If we have an E in the R hat direction, a B in the phi hat direction, and K as the direction of propagation, that'd give us an analogous TEM structure. We'll allow for the possibility that there's some variance in R. We'll let E be E of R times an exponential times R hat, and B be B of R times an exponential times phi hat. R hat cross phi hat gives K hat, so that checks out. We'll start applying Maxwell equations and boundary conditions. Del dot B equals zero is satisfied automatically, since the divergence involved taking derivatives of the something component with respect to the same something, and B depends on R and Z while being in the phi direction so the divergence must be zero. Gauss's law tells us that del dot E equals zero, and so if we apply the divergence in cylindrical coordinates to E, we get the following equation. And we can tidy that up by canceling out the exponential bit that depends only on Z, and multiplying across by R. That yields a quick little differential equation with solution E of R equals some constant big A divided by R. Next up, Faraday's law lets us rebuild B in the usual way. E is A over R e to the i k z minus omega t r hat. Taking the curl of that pulls an i k down and flips it into the phi hat direction, and that's equal to the time derivative of B, which is just the original B with an i omega pulled down. So the function B of R must be k a over omega r. But that's not all. We'd like a little more information to pin down not just B in terms of E, but also k in terms of omega, the dispersion relation. So we'll also apply the Ampere-Maxwell equation. Taking the curl of B and the time derivative of E is just a matter of following recipes, and we don't get a whole lot of terms. What we do get we can solve to determine that B of R also equals mu naught epsilon omega A over kr, in addition to being equal to ka over omega r. So setting those equal and solving tells us that k squared equals omega squared mu naught epsilon, and mu naught epsilon equals 1 over v squared, so k equals omega over v, and that's it. A very simple dispersion relation that when manipulated will show us that the group and phase velocities for the TEM mode in a coax cable are the same. No tricks, no fancy dispersion relations, no awkward frequency dependence or cutoff frequencies. As long as we get to operate in TEM, coax cables are really great ways of moving electromagnetic energy about. Here's the complete and blessedly simple form of the E and B fields. Pretty much plane wave with a 1 over R factor mixed in. The A gets fixed by some kind of amplitude factor, which in coax cables is usually an externally applied voltage. Typically you'll hook up a coax cable and apply some kind of voltage difference between the inside and outside bits to propagate the signal. And that voltage difference is related to the integral of E dot dl from R equals A to B, which is a pretty simple thing and yields A equals V naught over LN B over A. So here's the solutions once again, this time in terms of that applied voltage. Not too bad at all. The very last step would be to find induced charges and currents in the body of the waveguide using the relevant boundary conditions. Applying the E field condition gives us E out perpendicular minus E in perpendicular equals sigma over epsilon naught, which when evaluated at R equals A gives E in equals zero, and sigma equals epsilon naught v over a ln b over a times cos kz minus omega t, an induced charge distribution that forms a wave of its own. Similar considerations will give you the induced current distribution, which also propagates in a wave-like way, and the whole smash is indicated in these diagrams here. Clean and to the point.